All right, we are out here today on the 15th green. Andrew Rosenbaum alongside our superintendent, Dave Morrow. We're gonna talk a little bit today about pitch marks, uh, replacing divots and filling divots. Um, so here I am on the 15th green, I hit a nice shot in. I left a pitch mark. What I do as a golfer, I always mark my ball. I pick up the ball, that way I can't inadvertently knock it out of the way or cause, a sub, cause the ball to move and therefore lose a shot. Then I'm gonna pull out my divot tool and I'm gonna go ahead and start to fix my pitch mark. When I'm done fixing it, I'm gonna tamp it down with the putter. That gives us a nice smooth surface and it gives us something to roll with. One of the common mistakes that we see and, and comments we hear is there's so many pitch marks on the greens. So why is that? It's not necessarily that we're lazy, it's that oftentimes we're not walking from the tee to the green or the fairway to the green. Oftentimes we're taking our golf carts around, we're parking on the back side of the green, we're walking directly to our ball. Most of the time, our pitch marks are at the front of the green and our golf ball's somewhere past it. When you walk up to the green, if you're walking the course, you tend to walk by that pitch mark. So even if you are riding a cart, if you're on the green, Rule of thumb, fix one more mark than you made. So if you didn't make one, try and find one to fix it. That's gonna make life a lot easier for you going forward and for our fellow golfers coming out here. So Dave's gonna talk next about what the procedure is to properly fix the pitch mark without damaging the greens. Now the reason you wanna fix the pitch mark properly is most people go in with the pitch mark tool and pull up. When you do that, you actually rip the roots of the grass, pulling the grass up on it. What you actually want to do is go in with the tool and push towards the middle of the hole. That just fills it in, the grass fills in by itself around that, and leaves you a nice smooth putting surface to go across it. Remember, a lot of the pitch marks, you're not fixing necessarily for you, you're fixing it for the next group. It's much like Reiki bunkers, you're not breaking it for you, you're raking it for the next person. So pay it forward. All right, so that's how we're gonna fix pitch marks on the greens, not only here at Wolf and Truce, but any other course you play. Stick around, we got a few more things for you today. All right. We're back here again, Andrew and Dave. Uh, we're on the 15th tee uh, here at Wolf and Truce. We're gonna talk a little bit about divots and how to properly fill them, uh, especially on the par threes. So what you're gonna notice here, we have two different types of divots. We have a very small shallow, and we have a very large, very deep kind of crater divot. Um, from an agronomy perspective, there's two different uh, pieces to deal with here. So who better to talk agronomy than our chief agronomist, Dave. Um, so Dave, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the difference in the divots from the turf perspective, and then show us how to properly fill those. Well, from a turf perspective, a shallow divot like this generally doesn't leave much of a piece of sod left to put back. In that case, we're gonna use just sand from the box in order to fill it. On a big crater like this, as you can see, you end up with a good piece of sock. If at all possible, you wanna step what's left back, put as much of the sod back into the divot, and then fill the rest with sand. When filling with sand, you only fill to the top of the hole. Now Dave, what's the difference between filling to the top, underfilling or overfilling the divot? Overfilling ends up going through our mowers when we come back and mow the next day. On it. Underfilling ends up leaving a depression. If you fill right to the top and then step over the top of it with your foot, that's gonna go underneath our mowers and leave a nice smooth surface for the next player. Now, in the sand, when it gets in the mower reels, especially on the greens when you aerate, uh, I know you use a different set of mowing reels as opposed to your daily. Um, what exactly does the, the sand do to the blades? The sand is very, very abrasive on our machines. When we mow through too much of it, we end up having to grind the machines and they come out of service for a couple of days, which ultimately affects play and playability of the course. Now, when Dave and I came out here, uh, the first thing he did, you can tell he studies agronomy every day. He started looking at all the divots that were already here on the 15th tee from 
yesterday's play and the rest of the play that we had this week. Uh, so Dave, why don't you just talk to us a little bit about what, why you were looking at this first and kind of smirking at me. Well, this is immediately what you can see. You can see kind of up here in front, this is where my employee went through today and actually filled up divots. These are member filled, where they're actually a mound of sand. That is what's going to go through the machine. If you have too much extra, you can scatter it around, get it into the grass can canopy, and that's gonna be underneath our machine again. Perfect. All right, so a couple little things. Um, this is just all course maintenance. It's how do we get a better product? How do we get a better course conditions? Not only for yourself, but for your family or your guests that you may bring out. Um, the better we take care of the course, the longer we get it throughout the season in immaculate condition. Um, so Dave, thank you again. Uh, there's one last question I do get asked a decent bit. Um, I know we have sand buckets on the par threes, but we don't have them on the golf carts. Uh, what's, uh, what's the thought process there for you? The reasoning behind that is it eliminates this problem on the fairways with overfilling, sand going through our machines more often. The second part of it is there's seed in this sand to help grow back seed grass faster. The grass that is on the tees, the grass that's on the fairways, is not the same as the grass that's in the rough. If this grass is in the rough, it becomes super thick and very hard to hit out of. And nobody likes thick, hard to hit out of rough. So the more we can avoid that, the better. We also employ people specifically for the reason of filling divots in the fairways. So it's not a problem that members should have to deal with. There it is. Uh, so again, a couple little things, just more insight on your course and your club. Um, we're going to come back with even more. Stay tuned. If you've got any ideas, anything that you want to learn more about from Dave's perspective, from mine, from turf grass management, uh, to what does it take to uh, take care of a facility of our size, uh, let us know. We love the feedback. We want to hear more from you. Thanks again. While Andrew's picking up his divot, this is a perfect opportunity to invite everyone to a divot party that we're going to be throwing. On May 19th, that's a Wednesday at 5 o'clock, we'll be meeting on the practice screen. Myself, my crew will be here to assist. We're going to go out onto the golf course and we're going to show everyone how to properly, properly fill a divot. And if you have any other agronomic questions, feel free to ask myself or my crew. And if that's not enough, then we're gonna have some cocktails as well. Which is why you know the golf staff will be there. We hope to see you guys on Wednesday, May 19th. It'll be a fun time.